Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is startups and venture capital in COVID-19 recession. So, as you can see today, I'm wearing a hoodie since we're talking about startups and venture capital and that's what people in startups do, right? By the way, I don't even own a hoodie. This is my son's hoodie that I had to borrow. But you get the point. Now, $8.1 billion was invested in healthcare technology startups in 2018, and that was the most recent year I could find, and that was a 400% increase in healthcare technology uh, investments in, the, in f over five years. So while we talk about quote-unquote trillions of dollars these days, keep in mind that $8.1 $8 billion is real money. And so let's talk about the prudent use of that $8.1 billion with healthcare startups and venture capital. Now, there was a fantastic slide deck in 2008 called RIP Good Times by Sequoia Capital. And it was at the beginning of the last recession and it was their message to their portfolio startups and many of the lessons and instructions from that slide deck are very appropriate for today. Now keep in mind, 2008 was 12 years ago. Many people in healthcare startups are young, like 25, which means 12 years ago they were like 13. So they might have missed this because they were too interested in like Pokemon. So I'm bringing it back so that people can learn from the wisdom of the past. Now, there is a fa there are multiple fantastic checklists that all startups and venture capitalists should go through with their portfolio companies. One, do they have a must-have product? Okay, in times of recession, do you need to have a 10x superior offering? And from an engineering, product design, etc., ROI standpoint, it needs to be 10x. If it's not, you got to go back to the drawing table. Okay, next up. The revenue model. Your business needs to show how it can make money where income exceeds expenses. So gone are the days where you can just burn cash endlessly. You need to show how your business is going to create profit. Next, the sales process must be understood in detail, especially for healthcare startups. This is very challenging because it's a business to business environment. It is a complex business to business sale. And I have seen many organizations that have fantastic products and services and technology, but they did not understand how to sell in healthcare to businesses, whether those businesses are hospitals, physician practices, insurance carriers, employers, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so you have to understand that in detail. Next up, how will customers pay? What happens in a recession? People don't have money anymore. Organizations and businesses don't have any money anymore. So you need to have a very clear understanding. You need to have tremendous empathy to understand how your customers are going to pay for your service. Let me give you one example of how to solve that problem. Because your service specifically generates cash for your customer and you don't charge them anything until after that cash has been generated and then they just pay you some of it. So in other words, your product or service pays for itself. Next up, competition. Oftentimes in a recession, the large incumbents are the safest, best way to go. Or the employers are so busy laying off their employees that your competition is like a priority competition with just those layoffs. So you need to understand, it's not other startups, okay? It's generally not other startups. You need to understand how those incumbents and other priorities like layoffs are gonna get in the way of your startup succeeding. Leslie, cash, you, it's actually very simple. And in fact, go to Y Combinator and they have fantastic videos on YouTube about how you track cash in a startup. And guess what? Many startups do not track cash effectively. It's called looking at your bank statement. It might be looking at your bank study daily, weekly. It's probably not monthly. You need to look at your bank account probably more frequently than monthly to see how much is in there, how much is going out, and how much, if anything, is coming in. Next up, profit. You need to become
become what is referred to as ramen profitable. In other words, you need to keep your costs so low that the people that are found that are founding the company and are actually delivering the product or service are so cheap that all they're doing is living on ramen. And are you making enough money to support your life while living on ramen? And once you get to that, guess what happens? Your cash burn runway immediately goes to infinite, right? So you've got a cash burn rate and if it's in excess of the cash coming in, then guess what? Your company will die at some point. It has a death date. But as soon as you become ramen profitable, that goes away and your timeline becomes infinite. So that is incredibly important. Okay. So literally, I wrote checkboxes here because you need to go through each of those checkboxes. Now, there needs to be an operational review as well. One, you need to decrease headcount. Okay. The most important thing here is that you actually decrease the headcount. Okay, so none of this like thinking about decreasing the headcount. It's about actually decreasing the headcount. Okay, next, it's what are the essential features of the product, right? Because you know there's always the IT specifications and the whistles of everything you have. You need to get rid of non-essential features and only have the essential features. What does that mean? That means making people unhappy. It means making people within your company unhappy. It maybe means making your investors unhappy. It might even mean making some of your customers unhappy. But the point is, is that you have to make them unhappy to get rid of the nice to have things so that you only have the essential features. Next up, you need to cut the marketing budget that's not working. What is the key there? The key here is not working. You need to actually measure your marketing. And how do you measure your marketing? Is it generating leads? Most, you know, it's the classic joke in marketing that 50% of a marketing budget is waste. You just don't know which 50%. So you need to actually measure the leads on a weekly basis that are coming out of your marketing and your various campaigns. And if the campaign's not working, stop spending money on it. Next up, return on your sales investment. The deck goes on to say you need to have highly commissioned sales, maybe even 100% commission sales employees. You do not want to be giving them high base salaries. If you already are giving them high base salaries, you might want to renegotiate those base salaries because companies can spend gobs and gobs of money on salespeople that are completely ineffective on actually generating revenue. Okay, next up, what is your real pipeline? Guess what? A lot of startups don't even know their pipeline or they have these crazy projections where if they talk to somebody once on the phone, they put it in the pipeline and guess what? That's not real pipe. So you've got to measure real pipe with probabilities of closure. Now, you also need to defer payments when possible. So actually Apple does this, right? Where they have their payments are like 30, 60, 90, 120 days out. You can't do that with everything, but to the point with your own expenses that you can delay payment, do that. So review your payables and see where you can expend payment. Guess what? You're gonna get invoices. Maybe you shouldn't pay them right away. Okay, now, what's the most important thing that binds all of this together according to Sequoia is that it's done fast. Okay, it is measured in days and maybe weeks, as in like a week or two weeks. So this is not, we're gonna think about this and develop a plan over the next days and weeks. It means we're gonna do it. It means that the plan and all of the actions around this and all the decisions around this are not perfect. They're just good enough. So just know that you're gonna make mistakes. In fact, you have to make mistakes. If you're not making mistakes, then you're not acting fast enough. And our CEO at Compass did a fantastic job at this. He was able to act so quickly that it saved the business many times. Now, were there mistakes? Of course there were, but that just means he was doing it at the right pace. Now, here is why all of this is so important, in my opinion. It's because, and we saw this at Compass, as some of you may know, we grew a company bootstrapped to 2,000 employer clients, and we provided our service for, uh, in healthcare navigation for almost 2 million people nationwide. We eventually only raised one, a Series A. That was it. And we were able to be successful where so many other companies that had so much more money than us were not successful. And that's because smart decisions and effective action win. It's not the money that wins. It's the smart decisions and effective action. So if you can do that, I guarantee you, you will win. So this is a tremendous opportunity, frankly, for you to beat those well-funded other companies that make poor decisions and are not effective in their action. And that's what I wanted to share with you today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.